Today I'm going to demonstrate Rancher Desktop, the SUSE SLEE base container images, and Visual Studio Code all working together. Rancher Desktop provides container management in Kubernetes as a desktop app on your local system. Whether you're on Mac, Windows, or Linux, it pretty much works the same and provides that local environment. You can work with Kubernetes or you can work with container management through Containerd and Nerdy Control, which is a Docker CLI compatible uh, command line tool to work with Nerdy Control, or with Docker D itself provided through the Mobi project with the Docker CLI. In this case, we'll be using the Docker CLI and uh, Docker D provided through Mobi because that's what works with Visual Studio Code. But you can learn more about this at RancherDesktop.io. We'll work with the SUSE base container images, known as the BCIs, which provide uh, minimal environments or a base container that you can build upon. But they also provide programming language-based environments for things like Node.js or Go or the OpenJDK or Ruby and others that you can use if you're going to be dealing with your programming languages, either as a runtime or a build time tools. And we'll see a little bit of that today as well. You can learn more about that at registry.susa.com. And all of this is brought together using Visual Studio Code. Uh, VS Code is the most popular text editor or IDE used by developers today. It is in far wider use than any others. And it happens to be able to talk to the Docker socket provided by Docker D and Rancher Desktop. So they all can work together um, because of these built-in native integrations. And to start all of this off, we're going to start with a simple application, something that I have running here in Kubernetes, a Hello World application. Now it's exposed on localhost at this port, and that's because Rancher Desktop, and I'll pull up its port forwarding screen here, you can get to from the preferences. Um, it has the ability to do port forwarding from those internal services that you haven't put on a host port or through an ingress or something like that. When you want to get those internal services exported, you can do that. And I did that here. And it says, hello world. Now, in this case, I want to make a change. I want it to say, hello, SUSECON. And so we're going to go ahead and make that change. Now, here we have that chart or that that application that's running, and it's using Helm to install it. And Helm is the package manager for Kubernetes. And you can install an application, you can list the applications you've got installed, and you can tell it to use different versions of images and tags uh, and that kind of thing. And we'll use that feature in a minute, but it's got that 0.1.0 .0 version that says, hello world. So we're gonna go ahead and look at our source code here. And our source code's a simple Go app, and we wanna open this up in an editor. So we'll open this up in Visual Studio Code. And it's going to open up my source code here. And one of the first things it does is it says, uh, it looks like it's got a, you know, can be opened in a dev container, development container. Do I want to do that? And I'm going to say yes. And what this is doing is it's opening up my application in a container, I mounted the source, put it in a container, and is running that container for everything here. And this terminal is inside the container. Now, if I'm on Mac, Windows, or Linux, I get this exact same environment, the same build tools that are in here, the same versions, all of it. And this is all done through the remote containers feature of dev containers. And dev containers, you have a .dev container directory and a dev container.json file in it that tells you how to create this environment. And you can use it by building one from a Docker file or using an image that's pulled from a registry. In this case, I chose the Docker file example, so I can open it up and show it to you. And the Docker file is pretty simple. It says grab the SLE BCI image for Go at version 118 of Go, and then install a few things, tar, git, and gzip, which aren't in that base environment because it's really minimal and you just install what you need on top of it so you can keep it as small as possible. And these tools are needed so Visual Studio Code can interact with the, uh, the container that's running. And then I have this environment. So we can go over now and modify our application. It says, hello world. We're gonna change it to say, hello SUSECON. Now I wanna go run this to see what happens when I run this application. And so from inside that container, we'll go ahead and run the application. And I'm even gonna go ahead and pass in a flag. Now this flag is not a Go flag. It is an application flag defined in the source code uh, that says to, spit out some more pervasive information. And so it goes ahead and run, it downloads the one dependency, which is for logging, which gives you that, that deeper information, and then it starts up. And so we can go ahead and open this up in the browser, and it says, hello, SUSECON. We can see this changed application at work 
through the container. So we can come over here and you can see the verbose output that happened with the request and the response and this information here. So we'll go ahead and leave this. Now we want to go ahead and build that image. And there's a separate Docker file that doesn't define the environment I'm going to develop in, but that defines my build and runtime environment for my application as it'll be used inside Kubernetes. And this is a two stage. It uses a build container that goes ahead and builds the application and uses that same Go environment again. And this is useful because that environment I developed in is the exact same environment I'm going to use to build the binary, the same versions of things, the same environment. It'll go ahead and build it. So not only is my flow going to be cross platform, if I've got a developer on Mac and one on Windows, they have the same platform, but from dev to build, it's the same environment. And so it'll go ahead and build it. And then it's going to stick that Go binary that it builds in a BCI micro image, which it also pulls from the same registry. And we're doing this because this environment has some really minimal tools in it. So if I wanted to say shell into the container and look at what's going on or troubleshoot, I'd have that capability. And so we've got this environment. So we'll go ahead here in my application and build it. And this time we're going to go ahead and build it and tag it with the 0.2.0. 0.1.0 is what's running. We're going to go ahead and tag it with 0.2.0 and build this. And it's using that multi-stage Docker file to build up this new environment. And as soon as it's done, we'll go ahead and run that inside of Kubernetes and actually upgrade that Kubernetes environment. And here it's downloading the BCI from the registry and it built that image. In fact, if I go ahead and look at my images here, you'll see that the Visual Studio Code one, because it has that whole Go environment, is a gig in size. But the one we built for that application that we've got here is only 30 megs. And so you can see the size difference by using that build container and shrinking everything down. Now let's come over to this application and upgrade it. And so we're gonna go ahead and upgrade it. Gotta get my typing right. So we'll upgrade it. And when we upgrade this chart that we're using, and, and we're using dot to specify the chart as the local directory, and we're saying the name of it is HW for hello world. And we're gonna set the image to the new tag, and it's gonna go ahead and upgrade that environment. And Kubernetes will go ahead and spin down the old version and start up the new version and get everything working in that way. And it doesn't have to pull it to a registry and or push it to a registry and pull it because the container runtime already has it and it's one container runtime which is really useful for testing things so we can come over here to the hello world one we saw running before and if i go ahead and refresh it now says hello susicon because everything was upgraded and i was able to test it in development and actually bring it over to my chart and package the container up and have all of that environment nice and the same and so that, that shows the, the whole end to end of how the BCIs can be tied into this. Now, of course, we can go ahead and say, what happens if my Kubernetes is upgraded? How does my application respond? And it can be a little bit nervous if you're gonna go update your Kubernetes environment because a Kubernetes minor version to another one being upgraded has changes to it. And those changes, I mean, it's changing your platform. And so you really wanna know that everything works. And so one of the things you can do is change your Kubernetes version in Rancher Desktop. And when you're going to a newer Kubernetes version, then Rancher Desktop is actually able to upgrade Kubernetes. And so it shuts down the old version of Kubernetes, and then it's going to go ahead and bring up the new version of Kubernetes. Now, Rancher Desktop doesn't have every version of Kubernetes. And in this case, it's the K3S distro in it it'll go ahead and download the ones it doesn't have cached locally. And I've used this version, so it was cached locally, so it could shut down the old one and start up the new one really quickly. It takes a, a few seconds to download one if you didn't have that. Now here, because it restarted, the port forwarding was stopped. And so I've got to come in and start the port forwarding again. And we'll come over here and bring it up. And you can see the application came up and everything worked just fine. We were able to test that workflow. and this is one of the ways you can use the BCIs and Rancher Desktop and everything together. And of course, Rancher Desktop has other things. There's the dashboard, which is that same dashboard in Rancher brought to Rancher Desktop. And so you can explore your different 
resources and what's going on. There's the preferences, which include more than just preferences. So I can come into the images here and I can see that my BCI images, which you see right here, we can come here, we can do a scan and it's going to go ahead and update its scanning database. And then it can go scan that image for vulnerabilities or any issues in it. And as you see, there were no vulnerabilities because our base container images, uh, we keep them up to date. We're really good about not having vulnerabilities in them and releasing fixes right away. The application didn't have any vulnerabilities in its source, so the system didn't find any. But if they were, they'd be listed here so you could see it. And these are some of the features in Ranger Desktop and how all this can be tied together in your development environment. I hope you enjoyed this demo. You can learn more by going to rancherdesktop.io or going to registry.susa.com, and you can find out more about these projects from SUSE. Thanks and have a great day.